I'm Derek Walker, the pastor of the Oxford Bible Church, and today I want to share a message about how God works in our life, uh, how he works miracles and changes in our lives, uh, and I'm calling it Miracles and Voids. And uh, we're going to look, first of all, at his first miracle, the miracle of creation, because this gives a blueprint for how he works. The Bible says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The Elohim, the triune God, created a triune space, time, matter, universe. And then it's followed by a mysterious verse. And the earth was without form. That's tohu in the Hebrew, which means disordered. And void, which is bohu, which means empty, empty of life. And darkness was on the face of the deep. So the earth was initially an unstructured disordered chaos, secondly empty of life, and thirdly unenergized, no light. Why? Well, I think one reason that God did it this way is to teach a spiritual lesson about how God works generally. It, this describes our life, our parts of our life that without God, separated from his presence, because the light represents the presence of God, and darkness, the absence of light, represents the, the lack of his presence because of sin, and that cuts us off from his presence. And we see the same combination, tohu va bohu, in Isaiah 45. It says, Thus says the Lord who created the heavens, the God himself who formed the earth and made it, he has established it, he created it not in vain. That's not tohu. He formed it to be inhabited, which means not bohu, not void of life. I am the Lord and there is none else. And so God did not create the world to be tohu va bohu, formless and void, uh, but it started that way and then God formed it and filled it with life. And that's a picture of how God wants to work in our lives. And then, of course, God worked a miracle. And it says the Spirit of God moved, or hovered, oscillated, upon the face of the waters. This is a picture of the Holy Spirit, full of power, waiting and eager to manifest and release his power. And he was waiting for God's word. And then it says, and God said, let there be light, and there was light. And so we see from this two keys for how God performs a miracle. First of all, he actively does it by his word and his spirit. The spirit performs the word. God speaks his word, and then his spirit brings it to pass. Psalm 33 says, by the word of the Lord, the heavens were made and all the host of them by the breath. That's the spirit of his mouth. So when we speak, our breath goes forth with our words. And in the same way, God's spirit goes forth with his spoken word and brings it to pass. But we can miss the fact that there was also a second key. Yes, God actively did it by his word and his spirit, but God is revealing there's another key that's essential, the presence of a receptive void into which God speaks. For the earth was formless and void, and that's a vital key to how God works in our life today. So the two keys for God's miraculous intervention in our lives is, number one, his word and his spirit, the active agent of the miracles, and secondly, a void a vital condition for receiving a miracle. For example, in the miracle of reproduction, the active agent is the sperm, but for a miracle to take place, it must be received by the egg in the mother's womb. Likewise, God's word has the power to produce a miracle, but there needs to be a receptive place in our spiritual womb, in our heart, which is able to receive the seed of that word. The egg by itself has no power to create life, it needs the sperm. So it represents the void in our heart that needs to be filled with God's word and spirit. Now, it's also true that the sperm needs the egg. Likewise, God needs our open, receptive heart to accomplish his work in and through us. He needs our heart. But if our heart is full of ourselves and other things, then we're not open to receive his word and spirit. So there needs to be in our, in our spiritual womb a receptive void, which is open to be filled with his word. And if we are full, then, uh, sadly, there is no room in us to receive more from God. But if we have a void, that means we are open to God to fill us. And that's why Jesus said, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. We need to realize that our soul is hungry. It needs the life and the strength 
uh, of God and Jesus is the bread of life. So what's a void? It's an empty place in your heart or your life where that God's created or allowed to develop, which is designed to be filled with himself. He wants to fill you with himself, his word and his spirit, his presence, his life, his power. The void is the empty place where you're aware of your need for God's presence and his wisdom and his power. It's a conscious need or lack in you. And the extent of your void measures your capacity to receive from God, whereas your faith represents your ability to receive from God. You know, both are needed. As God works in your life, voids are formed so that God can fill you with more of himself. It's essential for a miracle. It's an awareness of a need, a desire for more of God's life and power. Jesus said, those who hunger and thirst for him will be filled. So when you come to the end of yourself and your strength and know your weakness without God's strength and your emptiness without God's presence and your need for God's help and wisdom, there is a void in you. Uh, and, but that's not a bad thing because it's essential for you to receive God's word and spirit. The void causes you to call out to God with all your heart for an answer from a deep humility. The opposite of having a void is self-sufficiency and complacency. It's good to be needy before God and then receive from him and be filled by him and his blessing. And then you can be givers to men of that blessing you've received. Now a classic example is receiving salvation. You have to come to the point where you know that you're a lost sinner who can't save himself and that you need salvation. That's the, your void. And then when you believe the gospel of his grace, by faith you call out to the Lord Jesus in your need to come into your heart and save you and fill your void with his life. And it, you know, if you feel no need for God, and his salvation, or you're filled with self-righteousness, God can't work in your life because there's no room in your heart for God. So your voids determine how receptive you are for a miracle from God. It's an empty space in you waiting to be filled. And you must present your voids to God and ask him to fill you. Isaiah 40 says, he gives power to the weak, to those who have a void, who are empty of strength. And to those who have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. In other words, he will fill your void your, if you wait on him, if you look to him in faith to fill you. And then it says, they will mount up with wings as eagles, but that's uh, not a good translation. It's literally, they shall mount up their wings like eagles to catch the wind. As we wait on the Lord, our heart, like the wings of an eagle, moves from a closed position, which is unable to catch the wind, to an open position, as we re realize our need for the wind of his spirit to fill our sails. Lifting up our spiritual wings requires acknowledging our void, our need, and inviting his presence and power to fill us. And so knowing that the gracious supply of his spirit is available to fill us, we lift up the wings of our heart by faith, trusting in his spirit wings, wind to fill us with his power, enabling us to do what we couldn't do before. As the eagle is empowered to fly, so he'll carry us along in our life, empowering us with his presence. And as a result, it says, they will run and not be weary. They will walk and not faint. So come before God, present your void to him, look to him and he will fill your void with his strength. And just as God's spirit hovered over the formless void of the earth, eager to manifest his power, so he hovers over your voids right now. He wants to fill your voids. You know, in our pride, we often want to cover our voids. We want to look strong and not admit or show weakness or need. Now, before people, it may or may not be right to expose our voids. But before God in prayer, we should always open up our heart and present our need fully to him, believing him to fill it. People feel their voids, but often we try and cover, cover them up. We try to fill the empty space with other things by being busy, distractions, eating, uh, drinking, drugs, TV, and so on. But the answer is to come to God in prayer and expose our hearts fully to God, he wants us to live depending on him. And that's exactly what David did in the Psalms. In Psalm 42, he says, as the deer pants for the water brooks, so pants my soul for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. I pour out my soul within me. 
O my God, my soul is cast down within me. Therefore I will remember you from the land of the Jordan and from the heights of Hermon, from the hill Mizar. And he's remembering the source of the river Jordan, which is a picture of the river of life at Banias, that at Caesarea Philippi, um, where there's the Mount Hermon. And the river flows down from Mount Hermon and flows out to water the land. And this is a physical reminder of the river of life that's available to us to fill our soul. And so being reminded of that fact, verse 7 is the key verse. Deep calls to deep at the noise of your waterfalls. And, and there is a waterfall there at Caesarea Philippi. And um, the waterfall of God's grace. And he's saying, from the deep, from the depths of my heart, I call out to the depths of God. From the depths of my void, I call out to the depths of God to fill me. And as a result, it says, all your waves and billows have gone over me. When we do that, God will fill us with his waves of blessing. And they are waves of blessing because verse 8 says, the Lord will command his loving kindness in the daytime. Well, in the miracle of creation, God first of all created a void, Genesis 1-2. Then he spoke his word and breathed his spirit into that void and filled it with light. Praise God. That's stage one in making the earth as he intended. He had to deal with a fundamental problem, the darkness. And our fundamental problem is spiritual darkness, the lack of the presence of God because of sin. In particular, our inner being, our, our spirit was dead, cut off from God, under the darkness and power of sin. So the first miracle God had to do was to speak light into our spirit so that our spirit would be recreated, born again. The Holy Spirit hovers over every man waiting to do this miracle, which can only happen when we acknowledge our void, our need of salvation, and receive Christ through believing and receiving his word through the gospel. And this is described in 2 Corinthians chapter 4. It compares the miracle of the new birth to what God did when he spoke light into the darkness in Genesis. He says, if even if our gospel is veiled, it's veiled to those who are perishing, whose minds the God of this age has blinded, who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ who is the image of God should shine on them for we do not preach ourselves but Christ Jesus the Lord and ourselves your bondservants for Christ's sake the God who commanded light to shine out of darkness that's Genesis 1 has shone in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ just like the original earth our spirit was in darkness because of sin. But the Spirit of God hovered over us, waiting for us to believe and receive the gospel of Christ. And God is shining his light upon us through the gospel, but we have to receive his word. When the barrier of unbelief is removed and we receive the word of Christ and his saving grace deep into our heart, then the Spirit manifests his word in us. God's word through the gospel is light be, salvation be, through Christ it's, it's yours to receive. And when we believed and received his word of grace, our spirit was changed from darkness to light through the power of the spirit and the word, a greater miracle than the original creation. The miracle of creation was accomplished in us, for he created our spirit by his power. We were born again. And, and Jesus compared the, the miracle of the new birth to the action of the wind, of the Holy Spirit. He said, surely I say to you, unless you are born again, you cannot enter the kingdom of God. He says then, most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. And then he describes how it happens. He says the wind, that's the, the pneuma, the spirit, uh, blows where it wishes. You hear the sound of it, but you can't tell where it comes from and, or where it goes. So is everyone who is born of the spirit. You see, the spirit, like the wind, is invisible. And you can't see him. You can't see where he goes, but he's powerful. And he enters a man, causing the new birth like air is breathed into the lungs, giving us life. 
you know, we can receive the, the air by breathing in. The air is freely available to us, but we have to breathe it in. We, how do we do that? We expand our lungs and that creates a void in us, an empty place of low pressure, which then causes the air to flow into our lungs. And, and in the same way, we receive the Holy Spirit by having a void in us, our humble awareness of our need. And then we receive and call on the Spirit to fill us. And so the Spirit, just like the air is available to us, the Spirit is hovering over you, ready to fill your void. This is how you receive the Spirit. But if you're strong in yourself, you don't feel any need for God, you'll find it hard to receive because there's no void in you to receive. These are people who, you know, think they're okay on their own without the Holy Spirit. And so they can't receive. Well... That God says that once we receive Christ, it says, you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Our, our spirit was changed from darkness to light. And, you, you know, I love the fact that God did that wonderful miracle in us. If, if, has God done that to you? Are you a new creation in Christ Jesus? Then your spirit is light in the Lord. But even so, there's more work for God to do. Your spirit's reborn, but your soul and your life can still be very without form and void, just like the earth was in the beginning. So the light was just the beginning. Stage two was that God structured, over the next six days, God structured the world, he formed the world and filled it with his life, and he did that by speaking his word every day. He said, let there be. And he spoke his word progressively, bringing order. And he does that in your life today. He speaks his word, preparing you to be filled with his life. He wants to fill you with his abundant life, but that needs the restructuring of your soul and your life in your attitudes, your motives, your beliefs by his word. And the purpose of forming the earth was so that it could be filled with an abundance of life. And likewise, the word is sent to us to, so that by aligning our lives with God's will, by believing it and acting on it, we might experience the formation of our character and the infilling of his life. Notice the pattern of creation week. But remember, the problem was that the earth was formless and without void, and, and void, empty of life. So first three days he formed the earth and then the next three days he filled the earth with living creatures first three days is formation by a process of separation he formed empty spaces that were designed for him to fill and then in the th next three days he filled all of those spaces for example day one he formed the heavens the stellar heavens day four he filled them with the sun moon and stars with energy Day two, he formed the atmosphere by separating the waters above and below. And day five, he filled the sky with birds and the waters with fish. Day three, he formed the dry land, separating it from the water. And day six, he filled the land with man and animals. Again and again, God worked by forming a void and then by filling it with energy and life. And he continues to work this way in these six days. And that's how he works in your life today. Having spoken his life into the darkness of your spirit and restoring his presence on the inside of you, that's just the start. He's continuing his work in you by speaking his word, forming your life, and forming voids, that spaces in which he can fill you with his life and power, so that when you call on him to fill your voids, he will fill you with his spirit of life. Praise God. You know, one great example of this is what I call the oil miracle in 2 Kings chapter 4. It says that a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets cried out to Elisha saying, your servant, my husband is dead and you know that your servant feared the Lord and the creditor is coming to take my two sons to be his slaves. So Elisha said to her, what shall I do for you? Tell me, what do you have in the house? And she said, your maidservant has nothing in the house but a jar of oil. The oil represents the Holy Spirit. But notice the key to receiving the miracle is to create a big void. Then he said, go borrow vessels from everywhere, from all your neighbors. Empty vessels do not just gather a few. The more the better, in other words. The bigger your void, the greater your capacity for God to fill you with the oil of his spirit. 
God can only fill you to your capacity, to the degree that you open your heart and present your voids to him. That's why it was vital that she gathered as many empty vessels as possible. And then it says, and when you've come in, you shall shut the door behind you and your sons, then pour it, pour the oil, into all those vessels and set aside the full ones. So she went from him and shut the door behind her and her sons who brought the vessels to her and she poured it out, the oil. And now it came to pass that when the vessels were full of oil, that she said to her son, bring me another vessel. And he said to her, there isn't another vessel. So the oil ceased. Notice the oil ceased when there was no more void. You see, to receive a miracle, she had to create a void, the empty vessels. The size of the miracle was determined by the size of the void because God, present, because God filled whatever void was presented to him. The lesson is that we are set the limit on God. He will fill whatever we give him, for the Holy Spirit is limitless. So even though the oil seemed to be limited to a small jug, as it was poured out, it multiplied, and it would have filled every vessel in the earth if everything that was presented to, to be filled was filled. The more of your heart you give him, in other words, these vessels represent the rooms in your heart. The more of your heart you give him, the more he can fill you. You know, we can see his grace in giving his spirit to us as much as we are able and willing to receive. He will fill, and he can fill whatever you offer him. Notice, when there were no more empty vessels to fill, there was no more miracle. The flow of oil stopped because there was nowhere left for the oil to go. The oil continued to flow as long as there was a void to fill. Otherwise, the spirit will continue to be, so in the same way, the spirit will be continue to flow into your heart as long as there is that void that you present to God to fill. And so her void represented her capacity to receive a miracle. The voids, the empty vessels don't create a miracle. God does that. But the voids are necessary to receive the miracle. Without the void, there can be no miracle. So these vessels, you see, represent our hearts. They need to be open to receive the oil poured in from above. Uh, and, and likewise, our hearts must be submitted under God and open to him to receive his spirit that's poured out from above. And uh, we must open and receive and call on him to fill us, believing that God can fill whatever we offer him. And also they would have emptied these vessels of whatever was in them before, because otherwise they couldn't receive the full oil. And so the more we try and fill up our hearts with carnal things, the more we reduce our capacity to receive God's oil. Remember, your fundamental capacity and your fundamental need, rather, isn't for things to fill you and entertain you, but your real need is for God himself. He alone can truly satisfy you with his life and his love and his peace. You are an empty vessel, like it or not, without God. You are designed to be filled with his spirit. You only then will be, you be satisfied and happy. Your pride and your independence, wanting to own and control your soul and your life, is what prevents you from admitting your need and opening yourself for God to fill you. You know, we'll always depend on God who will keep filling our void. And, and really, how much you desire to be filled with God will determine how much you're willing to surrender your independence and open your heart to God and allow you to be filled with his life and to depend on his life. The more of your heart you will surrender to him uh, and then you will be able to receive more and more of the life of God. So ask, present your voids to God. Ask him to fill you with his life and surrender your soul to him and he will fill you to the degree that you actually offer to him. Let me mention just quickly how you can grow your voids. First of all, move forward in faith. You know, when God tells you to do something, that always creates a void in you because you can't do it in your own strength. You become aware of your inability to do it. <clears throat> and therefore, that's, that's a void. That's good. Now, you have to depend on his grace. And by faith, you can access his power. But the void happens when you 
step out to obey God, that you become aware of your need and then you call upon his grace to help you. Fasting can help grow your voids because it, you are removing the natural things that, that we tend to use to fill and satisfy. So we, that increases our need for God. So when we combine that with prayer, looking to God to fill our void, praise God, then, then we open the door for God to work more powerfully in our life. Also, trials and tribulations, we don't enjoy them. But actually, Paul says that he, he learned the lesson that God's grace was sufficient for him, for God's strength is made perfect in weakness. And he even rejoiced in those persecutions and those troubles because they created a void in him. They created a sense of weakness and need for God. And so in that need, he called out to God. And as a result, he experienced greater grace in his life. And so all these things create voids. They make us aware of our need for God. So wherever you're at in your life, remember that void is an important part of your miracle. The void does not cause the miracle. Only God can do that as you believe him. But the void is the necessary precondition that qualifies you for a miracle. You must present your void to God in faith and then look to him to fill it. And then God will work a wonder in your life. God bless you. Biblical prosperity. Yes, there is such a thing. Some people are afraid of prosperity and, and that. Maybe I should have called this biblical abundance, but really we, we need to understand that God does want to prosper us, not for our selfishness, but so that we can be a blessing for others. And so this is not about raising money or anything like this. This is simply understanding what the Bible has to teach us about finances and how to put God first in our finances. And so we have this book that is uh, a thorough textbook on this subject. And we also have two CD series that cover this material, eight CDs each. Let me encourage you that you don't be afraid of this subject. Thank you for watching. Join with us at Oxford Bible Church every Sunday at 11 a.m. Greenwich Mean Time for our live stream service or join us at Cheney School, Headington, Oxford, OX3 7QH. You can watch more of our teachings on our Roku channel and Derek Walker's YouTube channel. All Derek Walker's books are available in printed and Kindle versions in all Amazons worldwide or online with other great products where you can also support our programs at www.oxfordbiblechurch.co.uk or by calling 01865 515 086.